Hi everyone, I'm Sarah O'Connell and welcome to a very special seven year anniversary episode of the Sarah O'Connell Show. As subscribers already know, in every episode, I ask my celebrity guests, can you tell me a fun fact about you, something we may not know, it can be a hobby, a party trip, or something like that. I always love asking this question and never know what they're gonna come out with. They're always entertaining, often insightful, inspiring, or sometimes a bit of flipping shocking. And you're gonna wanna stick around to the end of this video to find out what I'm talking about. In this special episode, I've collated fun facts from 32 amazing guests. And I'll also be popping up with bonus fun facts about the show too. Speaking of which, here's my brand new, freshly animated opening title sequence. Welcome to the Sarah Carnal Show. Okay, fun fact time. The most people I've ever featured in one episode of the Sarah O'Connell Show is 70. Joe Lyser and Catherine Ryan are currently joint first for the most number of individual appearances at five each, including four interviews and a video message. The least number of appearances is currently zero, which is a record held by several billion people. Catherine Ryan was also my very first guest, so I'm delighted to start the show with her as I did seven years ago on this very day. Hi, I'm Catherine Ryan. Welcome back to the Sarah O'Connell Show. I mean, I wonder if you could see it on podcast. No, you can't see it on your thing. I have a really interesting hole in my throat. That's the only mm -hmm. part that I can show on video, but I don't think the quality of the video is good enough. Like, you know how you have one hole in your throat? Yeah. I sort of have two. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I'm from a small town. When I had my tonsils removed, that might have been a doctor. It might have been the bin man. I don't know who did that, but I did not sue. I just have two holes in my throat. I don't think people know that. Yeah, people don't know that about me. Huh. That's very interesting. Can you, are you sort of aware of that when you breathe or eat and stuff? Not at all. Let me see if you can see it. You probably can't. Sure. Uh, that's too much light. Oh, wow, yeah. You did, you could see it. Yeah, I could see it. Cool, right? Amazing. Does that <laughs> go like all the way through to your ear or? No, it just goes down to like my throat. You're gonna get the weirdest fetish like falling <laughs> out. It's a very niche fetish. You're going to own that market. Yeah, exclusive. Hi, I'm Zach Alligan and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. What, a fun fact about me? Yeah. Party trick. Mm. Well, one of the most famous ones is that I can put my entire fist in my mouth. Have you ever seen that? That counts. Yeah. So you take your, the tr there's a trick to it. You take your, I haven't done this in a long time. I hope it don't hurt <laughs> myself. You take your knuckle yeah. of your thumb and you lead with that <clears throat> and yeah. then you go. Well, that, that definitely counts as a party trick, I think. Isn't that a party trick? Yeah. I can do this thing too um, with your tongue. Can you do this? Oh wow, no I can't, no. This is Harriet Thorpe. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. I'm not going to do it now, but I can still do the splits. Yes, I've been doing it the entire interview. Apparently, yes, you can't tell, but it's very no. impressive. It's just my clothes, I can't do it with my body, but yeah. Just, yeah. In your head. Yeah. I can do it actually physically, but I'm not going to. Hi, I'm Brian Moses and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show funny thing people might not know about me uh geez that's a it's a really good question um i got surgery on my eyes i guess i got some work done uh when i was like three years old because i had like these really low hanging like uh eyelids that were like a birth defect i guess and i couldn't really see out of them so then uh yeah in like the late 80s i got uh i got them i got them done and they uh they it was like the beginning of those kind of surgeries i guess yeah. and um they didn't really do a good job so like one of these eyes kind of raises higher than the other so when i sleep at night sometimes i kind of sleep with my eyes open so i look like i'm dead sure. ladies <laughs> or fellas i want this to be for everybody yeah. hi i'm emma blackery and welcome to the sarah o'connell show well it's not exactly the most overwhelming but i can uh I, I do this thing, like naturally when I yawn, that like I spit water by accident. It's called gleeking. Is it girl. under your tongue? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I do it every time. Because when I first found out I could do it, I got so fixated on the fact that I could do it that it became the normal way of me yawning. And now I can't do it without that. And um, my partner saw it for the first time yesterday. Not yesterday, uh, the other week. We've been living together for ages and ages. 
Um, and we've been together like over a year and a half. And it was the first time he saw it. it was, we were just sitting on the sofa and I just yawned and just a jet stream of water came out. He was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> He'd never seen it before and I had to explain to him, it's called gleeking. Um, so whenever I yawn, which is a lot because of the fatigue, I just, it, I just get soaked. It's terrible. Um, I, I have this horrible, oh God, I'm talking about yawning. <laughs> um, well, I have this horrible thing at the minute when I'm doing sit-ups. Um, just before I start, I get really yawny. So I'm laying on the floor and I yawn and it goes all back over my face. It's horrible. And I forget every day that that happens and I do it <laughs> every day. Hi, I'm Rachel Lee Cook and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Party trick? Okay, what's yours? Help me think of uh, like what kind of... I can wiggle my ears, which isn't uh, that exciting. I can do that. I can do that. Can you wiggle your nose? Yes, here we go. Yep. This is good. This is good TV right here. Yeah. We're really doing in it. <laughs> so so I, I can do that. I can touch my, my nose with my tongue. This is good stuff. No one needs to see that way. <laughs> I, I think you're wrong. I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of websites that would love to see that. Yeah, yeah, speciality websites. That's a whole different thing. That's what I'm filming this evening, just three hours of that. It's going to be a gritty turn-of-the-century drama. Mm -hmm. going to be I like this. I like this journey for you very much. Some guests have been on my show, then gone on to win BAFTAs or even Oscars shortly afterwards. Others have revealed to me their wildest dreams and ambitions on The Sarah O'Connell Show, such as comedian Ed Gamble. Hello, I'm Ed Gamble and welcome to The Sarah O'Connell Show. Do you like to go on Taskmaster? Because I have amazing comedians on there and I thought you'd be perfect for it. No, I wouldn't like to do that. Yeah. No, it looks terrible. You think so? Awful, awful. Of course I'd like to do it, Sarah. But th that's not how it works. I can't just say I want to do it. It might work. They have to, they have to book me. You know, Samuel L. Jackson said on an episode of, I don't know if it's TG, TFI Friday or Big Breath or something like that, he wanted to be in Star Wars, then he got into Star Wars based on that. As soon as he started saying that, I knew it wasn't going to be relevant to me. I am not Samuel L. Jackson. And it wasn't like he went, he wasn't working on the Big Breakfast on the camera or something and he yeah. said, I want to be in Star Wars and they put him in Star Wars. He was still Samuel L. Jackson. Could help. I am not Samuel L. Jackson. This is the Sarah O'Connor show. Yeah, this is the Sarah O'Connor show, to be fair. I don't know what kind of power that wields, but we, we can find out, right? All right, I want to be on Taskmaster. Sort it out. Long story short, Ed Gamble went on to win Taskmaster Series 9. You're welcome, Ed. Next up, we have Richard Ranch from Whose Line Is It Anyway, who famously has no accent. Hi, I'm Richard Ranch, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Whenever I get west of Swindon, my Somerset accent returns. <laughs> now we're going to have to go with you when you go west of Swindon to see if this is accurate. Well, hopefully I'll be, you know, at the Bristol Hippodrome at some point with Paul Merton. After interviewing Guinness World Record holder Leah Shutkeever, she invited me to take part in one of her challenges for the most people eating fish and chips simultaneously online. And ridiculously, I'm now a Guinness World Record holder for eating chips. I trained my entire life for this moment. Speaking of which, lots of other guests absolutely love talking about food such as hey you guys this is mickey james and welcome to the sarah o'connell show i am a master at eating chicken wings i have a special oh, wow. trick you'll see because there's a chicken wing day national chicken wing day coming up so i'm actually being um told that i need to record said video of me preparing these wings but also the wing eating trick so it's like a you know you got to push it down and then dip right. It. right so there's that um i'm pretty much a champion of the world at that nobody can beat me now, when you say that, is this eating the most chicken wings or is it removing all no, of the no, chicken no, no, in one no, go? No, we don't want to overindulge ourselves. Right. No, it's more about being able, the art of eating a chicken wing and not the drumstick one, but the wing, the wing ding, mm. and then push it down. So then it creates this like little umbrella thing. So then you can get all in one bite because otherwise, you know, you're like kind of all over the chicken wing and then you end up having sauce and everything everywhere. So yeah. this is like, you know, is it classy? I don't know. But does it do the trick with all the meat off the bone in one swoop? Right. And then you're done. And then and you no mess. in your mouth and no not around your face. Right. See, that's a no skill to have. <laughs> I think so. 
Yeah, um, I think so. We're better skillers there. Like, <laughs> don't don't worry, you'll feed it, you'll feed it. <laughs> if nothing else, I'll just be known as the chicken wing eating lady yeah. after that video. Yeah. That's how people recognize you, by your lack of chicken on your face. <laughs> Everyone just has chicken everywhere. Right, and sauce. <laughs> you know. exactly. Is that lipstick? No, that's sauce. Mm. There, there needs to be a championship or a hall of fame for this, I think. I think it would be just, you know, not the drumstick, obviously, but the wing yeah. on a golden yeah. plate. But a serving plate. <laughs> a golden serving plate. I think this is a fantastic idea. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lucy Spraggan. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. I eat apples completely whole, including the stem. The little twisty wooden bit. I eat all of it. The oh, whole, wow. th just the whole thing. Whole thing. It's kind of a new thing. Yeah. Like, I didn't have anywhere to put my apple core, so I just ate the whole thing. I was like, that's not really that bad. So I just eat oh, the whole yeah. thing. That's now. fair enough. I suppose it's made of apple. Exactly. I don't think it's that weird. Like this woman um, sat opposite me on the train once with her headphones on eating a whole pepper. And I just kind of, after seeing that, I thought I should live more. I should mm -hmm. just live on the edge like that woman eating a whole pepper on the train. <laughs> I had a friend at university that used to eat whole kiwi fruits. See, I, so do I. Do you really? Yeah. Like, I don't think anyone taught me. Like, yeah. I think with fruit, Obviously not <laughs> citrus stuff. You can't bite it and it tastes yeah. bad. I like If it doesn't taste bad, I'll just chow down. Yeah, exactly. I went to Tesco once and I just bought this food blender processor thing. And I, was, I thought, I'm going to make a smoothie and I want to just have the most amazing variety of fruit ever. So I got things like uh, dragon fruit and now something called Sharon fruit, I think. And I just got blueberries and raspberries and just cherries and just put it all in there. And it just tasted like kiwi fruit and banana. Oh. Yeah. There's literally included? about 20 kinds of fruit in there. Strange. Yeah. I want to try that fruit that stinks, but apparently it's absolutely delicious. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, like, apparently, or vo vomit fruit. There's some fruit that stinks at the back of our fridge, but I think it's just gone off. <laughs> I think that's what I wouldn't try that. Oh, gross. <laughs> My fridge is like that. I'm so bad. I'm so Not bad. bad. I am Brian McFadden and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. What a party show. What have I done? Oh, do you know what? I'm addicted to pop chips. Are you? Salt and vinegar pop chips. Oh. And, and like, re like weirdly addicted. Like I eat two packets a day and they're that size. <laughs> um, I, I even w rang um, one of the supermarkets and I got them to deliver 40 packets to my house. And the guy just kept coming with all these plastic bags full of pop chips. And Danielle, my partner, was not happy because there was nowhere in the house to put them. They ended up going up on top of fridges and in wardrobes and under the couch. So my house is crawling with salt and vinegar pop chips. Not for long, though, because no, you eat that. Two a day, 20 days, the last three weeks, they're gone. I've got a similar relationship with Pepsi Max. I kind of panic if we... Was, I like it. I don't know why. No, I'm a Diet Coke, man. I've never liked... Or Coke Zero now. I like Coke Zero more. But no, the, uh, Pepsi Max always reminds you of three o'clock in the morning at KFC for some reason. I don't know why. Just I just want it always to be three o'clock in the morning in KFC. Yeah. Greasy melt with Pepsi Max. Yeah. Love it. Hi, I'm Leslie Ash and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Something you might not know. I think everyone yeah. knows about everything about me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love wine. I do. My husband and I, we, we like to collect wine. We like to go all over really? the place in France. Yeah, collecting wine and stuff like that. So I do think of myself as a little bit of a, a wine buff. Um, although I gave up drinking for 17 years while I was yeah. learning how to walk. So this is all a bit new. I only just started drinking again. Do you have any favourites? I missed wine, red wine, white wine, burgundy. Mm. Yeah, I like white burgundy and I like yeah. really like Spanish, Italian wines, Rioja. Um, yep, yeah, that's it. That's, <laughs> that's what people might not know about me. There's an actor mm. called Sam Neill who was in Jurassic Park who lives yeah. in New Zealand and has a vineyard there and posts these gorgeous photos. So I'd love to go for that. Yeah. Just try the one. No, I know. Yeah, there's a few actors that have got vineyards. That, um, yeah, that, no, there's quite a few. You could do a sort of like tour of the actors' vineyards. Yeah. I've got something like that. I've probably just got some gone off fruit in the fridge, which is starting to turn into alcohol. But I probably just need to do that. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> be all right. Hello, I'm Neil Morrissey. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. 
we loved Fizzy Fish, you see. That's yeah. why Martin drew it. Yeah. I mean, the, the nearest thing to it now is the fanta Fantastics that, mm. that Haribo do, which are really good. Um, but they're the nearest you can get to Fizzy Fish these days. Yeah. But as a company, me, Caroline, Leslie, Martin, we all loved Fizzy Fish. We used to rehearse in a Cub Scout hut. And they said, look, you know, you can have any of the sweets that are there, because they're all in a cupboard, yeah. or the crisps, you know. Um, but you must put the money in the bowl. So we ate them out of Fizzy Fish. We discovered fizzy fish thanks to the Cub Scout movement. That's fantastic. I know. Some people went discover gravity and things like that. You discovered fizzy fish. Yeah, we were the Newton of our era. Basically, yeah. Mm. We we always before we're both honorary doctors now. Yeah. So did Caroline, who isn't. Makes sense. Yeah. But it's really good news too. So it means you're going to love your Christmas present for me because it's mostly um, it's tank fastics, but they're but they're nibbled into the fish shape. Uh, okay, that's nice. At least it's something crafty, and I like that. I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's gone a bit sticky, but they'll be fine. <laughs> I don't, listen, who doesn't like a bit of sticky between their fingers occasionally? Exactly, exactly. I think so, everyone does. So, so true. It's my motto. At least if you don't like it, you've got to, you've got to wear it, really, haven't yeah. you? If you don't like it, it's going to happen. Yeah. Just be, prepare everyone for that. And, you you're know, gonna get sticky fingers at some point. And you can take advantage of it and become like Spider-Man or something. Like, he didn't let it get to him. Yeah, I did try that. Um, and I tried putting fizzy fish on my toes and then tried to scale a wall. Yeah. It doesn't work. F fish are already scaled. Exactly. Hi, this is TJ Newman, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Party trick. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess to kind of bring the two worlds together, um, as a flight attendant, I'm typically pretty good, and I feel like most flight attendants are pretty good at this, that I could, I could predict what your drink choice will be. Oh, really? Yeah. That's very intriguing. What, what do you think my drink choice would be? Well, I'm going to go with tea. Yep. And I would say tea with cream, no sugar, just cream. 100% correct. Is that correct? Seriously, yeah. Oh, and I'm even rusty. Whew. I'm impressed. I sometimes treat myself to an orange juice as well. I can see that. And I'm going to guess without ice, correct? It depends if I'm hot or cold. Summer, I'm going to go ice, winter, not so much. I love it. I love it. Yeah, when you, when you work as many flights as I've worked, you start to know your routes um, and you start to st stock your cart depending on what city you're flying into or flying out of because you know what's going to go. Um, and, and you can usually guess what people are going to order. It's a, it's a strange uh, litmus test. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe Lysett, and welcome back to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Can you tell me a fun fact about you, something we may not know? Hobby, a party trick, something like that. No, there must be something. <gasps> I make a fantastic tomato soup. Are you ready? What do yeah. you put in it? Apart from tomatoes. Well, that's the twist. There's not one tomato in my How many tomato. are there? Uh, there's uh, dozens. Uh, depending on how big they are, uh, I make a really nice tomato soup. I uh, cut up an onion, some tomatoes, cut them in half, and I put them in a pan on the hob with loads of olive oil in it. Salt, pepper, a bit of cayenne pepper or paprika. Very nice. Um, let that sort of char a little bit so you get like the black bit on the bottom yeah, of the yeah. tomato. Then you roast the shit out of it, 20 minutes or so. Uh, midway through, drop a, drop a garlic in there. Uh, get, give that, get that roasted. Then you get it out and you put vegetable stock in. And then you just mash it. You don't whiz it, you just get a masher. Mash it all up. Little bit of cream, give it a stir. Heaven. Really simple. Any suggestions of kinds of bread to have with that if you have it? I love a crouton, crouton. but you know, uh, something crispy, something buttery. It is, by the way, Gordon Ramsay's recipe. Is it? So it's you're gonna, aware. It's going to come out quite well then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, just, just so you know that. When I say I make a nice tomato soup, I didn't invent tomato soup. Oh, you didn't? No, I didn't. No. Um, 
Actually, fuck it. Yeah, I'll go with that. I invented tomato soup. I've Proof not had anyone else claim it. Exactly. Sarah, I'd love you to fucking prove that I didn't invent tomato soup. Well, we've got the internet now. It'll probably take four seconds. Yeah, it wouldn't. Though. Haters would say, oh, well, tomato soup has been eaten for hundreds of years. Joe has been alive for 34 years. Well, so you tell us. Exactly. Exactly. Hi, I'm Cassie Workman. Welcome to the Sarah Connell Show. Yeah, as I guess there's plenty of stuff. Yeah. I have a, a I have a certificate three in commercial cookery. I worked as a as a chef for a long time. Amazing. So I like to at home. I cook a lot of Mexican food. So in this show, I talk about Mexican food. Yeah. And I think you know. I mean, it's just a joke, but I actually do really love Mexican food. And I, I'd, I survive pretty much exclusively on it when I'm at home. Do you know what? I, I lived in America for a year and I actually lived in a Mexican community. And because, yeah. yeah, and I was kind of worried about spicy food just in general. Like I just, you know, spice, like ketchup was quite spicy for me, you know, that kind of level. Really? Yeah, well, just, wow. <laughs> you know, if I wanted to spice a dinner up, okay. I'd add the ketchup. And then I moved back to England and I thought I must try Mexican food and I really like it. And I massively regret not just eating it. it here. Yeah. See, this is I've been back there since and had it, but initially ah. that was that was a mistake. That that was a mistake. It was. Mm. Mm. Tu habla español? Sí. Oh, sí bien. Yeah. yeah. You should have eaten more more food there. I know. Huh? We should have. Oh well, you come around to my house if you come to Sydney. Come around to my house and I'll. I'll whip you up some chalupas or something. Right, we'll do it straight after this. You know, actually, I used to go to Outback Restaurant, which was Australian-themed in America. Confusing situation. That's that's so crazy to me that there's a there's an Outback Steakhouse yeah. in America, and that seems to be all they know about Australians is the Outback Steakhouse. And every time you hear somebody like in America doing an impression of Australians, they're always talking about the Blooming Onion. Oh, yeah, we have no fucking idea what a blooming onion is. That's got nothing to do with Australia. What the... F What's a blooming onion? We don't know. It's a giant onion that's bigger than your head. That's what it is. And it blooms. We don't have that. We didn't invent that. You should get it. It's got nothing to do with us. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's going to be a gift for Australia. That's In the same way that the Statue of Liberty was the gift for America. And now yeah. it's as American as anything else. The blooming onion is our Statue of Liberty. Yeah. That's a wonderful way to look at it, and you've you've changed you've turned me around on the whole thing. I, I love the blooming onion now. Oh yeah, I'll I'll fight and die for it. It's worth it. They are delicious. <laughs> are they? Yeah. Oh, that's good. You want to have it with several people, though. I, I wouldn't suggest tackling one by yourself. Really? Are they huge? They're quite big. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But it's just an onion, right? It's a big onion. Okay. I might have been sat too close to it, but it seemed big. All right. Yeah. All right. I recommend that. Okay. They put it in ice water, don't they? Oh, they might. That's the, that's how they do it, I think. <laughs> Makes it open up. Hey, everybody. This is singer Billy Gilman, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Oh, uh, I'm a really, really good cook. No, m not many people know that unless you're close to my circle. Oh, I mean, people know I cook, but I'm, I'm, I have to say I'm a pretty good cook. Um, and funny enough, my... This is so funny. I, I love heritage and I love reading about where you come from and what this means and what that. Yeah. I, I recently found out de dealing with, you know, I really wanted to dig into what my last name, where it comes from, what it means. It's a French derivative of William. And my, my first name is William. So wow. I, am my, I am my own palindrome. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that of all these years. It translates back to an original version of William. So I'm William William. I love Not that. Not many so people know that because I just found out. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, anyway. we've got an exclusive here today. <laughs> yeah. Alan Jerome Gilman. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a name for an album right there. Right. <laughs> the smallest area I've ever done an interview in is an electrical cupboard backstage at the comedy store with Kerry Godleyman. I'm really sorry that we're having to do it in this room. So we're in a cupboard, aren't we? We sort of are. Well, it's more glamorous than a cupboard. Come on. Yeah. It's backstage at the London Comedy Store. It's that too. But it is essentially a cupboard. 
It's in their cupboard. Yes. Yes. But lots of people out there yeah. would love to be in this cupboard. They would love to be. Yeah, this is where it's at. This is where the party's happening. This is, exactly. The biggest area I've ever done an interview in is outside with Tom Cruise. I don't know if you've ever been there, but outside is massive. It's got the solar system and quite a few trees in it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hello, I'm Ed Byrne. Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to the Sarah O'Connell Show. I, I, I'm sure there must be something. But I've, I've, I often get asked if I have any hidden talents. Yeah. And I don't. What meagre talent I have is permanently on display. <laughs> I never, if there was anything about me, I would, I would, if I could play the guitar, it would be incorporated into my act at some point. Yeah. I would absolutely have broken it out on stage. Uh, I would never keep, keep secret any skill that I had. Um, but, uh, no, I don't really have anything other than I'm learning carpentry. Are you really? There, that's a fact, I guess, I'm sort sure. of. I don't know if this is the first time it's been revealed on camera, but I'm trying. Certainly on this show. Uh -huh. I'm trying to... A chopping board will be the first thing I will make. <laughs> I'm trying to make things out of found wood. So I'm not buying the wood, using the wood from a tree that's come down. But it's a very slow process because if, yeah. if, if the tree was alive, then you've got to wait for it to dry out and stuff. But you've got to dry it at the right temperature because otherwise it cracks. Okay. Yeah. So there's th that. So I, I finally got some wood because I think it's seasoned enough that I can start making stuff out of it. That's exciting. Good luck with that. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really good thing to do. The ultimate goal is a canoe. Yeah. It would be good, and you have to get that right so it doesn't sink. Exactly, exactly. Hello, my name is Milton Jones, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Hello, I'm Ed Byrne, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. <laughs> that was even better than Ed Byrne did it. I can do other names as well. This is fantastic. I mean, hello, I'm Sarah O'Connell, and welcome to the Ed Byrne Show. Exciting. I've got an old Type Two VW camper van. Yeah. You know, the old school, um, 1975. Quite good condition. I'd like to charge off in that. Um, what makes it camper? VW. Yeah, has it got a, like a disco ball in it? Or? No. Oh, I see camper. Yeah, I see. I'm not used to jokes. So Sorry. Yeah, sort of. um, no, it isn't, it isn't camper in that sense, really. It needs a whole refit and sort yeah. of velour and, and yeah. Do you, do you tour in it? Uh, not not tour comedy, no. Mm. No, it's not fast enough to do it. Okay. And it makes a noise. So. Uh, it's nice to look at there. So. Mm. I understand it's blue and white. Yes. And Mother Teresa. Called Mother Teresa. Blue and white and old yes. and almost dead. <laughs> Still helping out where it can. Yes, and uh, running an orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Before I could interview WWE Hall of Famer Diamond Dallas Page, he genuinely made me do an entire week of his DDP yoga. Yo, it's me, D. D P Diamond Dallas Page and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell show and that's not a bad thing that's a good thing bang speaking of wrestlers here's Nyla Rose from AEW and Dolph Ziggler from WWE hi I'm Nyla Rose and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell show Fun fact, fun fact, uh, oh, silly fact, a silly mm. fact. And I don't know why this came up in conversation, but it did. Uh, when I was in, I want to say sixth grade, I started collecting tennis balls for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why, but by the time I was in eighth grade, I had like over 200 tennis balls. Oh, wow. Never played tennis. I, I don't <laughs> know why that became a thing. I just, I, I was in love with tennis balls. It, 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 I don't know, weird Nile effects. And so would you try to get different tennis balls, like different colored ones, or just get tubes full of them, or just any like like just the Yeah, anytime I would like find a tennis ball, like the just the neon green was kind of like my go-to. But yeah, if there was like a weird color one or like one from a special event, you know, those are like the, the top tier, uh, uh, top shelf tennis balls. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Do you still have those? No, 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 no. I, I donated them to a um, a pet rescue for like the dogs, uh, yeah. like way like a lot eons. No, I'm young. I'm young. I'm I'm only like <laughs> in my twenties. So it was like last week. 
Hi, I'm Nick Nemeth. Uh, sometimes you may know me as Dolph Ziggler, but welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. I got a party trick. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, uh, so I, I felt a couple days a week I feel pretty useless just sitting around the house. Right. So I've gotten back into uh, studying uh, American Sign Language, which I, I studied in college. And I'm very much out of practice, but I can sometimes, sometimes keep a conversation going. So I started going over my colors and different things and basics. So I, I used to be fluent. I, um, we had to take two semesters of a language in college, and I saw that you could take American Sign Language. So I said, oh, I'll try this, because I, uh, I, I had a little trouble with Spanish in high school. So I said, oh, I'll try American Sign Language, and I did my two semesters, and I really liked the teacher and a couple of the people so much, uh, the couple of students that were in there with me, that I just kept taking classes. So I ended up taking like five or six. And so at the time, I used to be really almost fluent and pretty decent at it. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm okay. I'm, I'm hit or miss. But I, I found out if I work out, I promise myself work out every day, write a little bit, and do 20 minutes of a sign language uh, workbook or a little, watch a little video, just a little video online and just go over the colors and get a couple different things simple that each day I'm at least doing something while I'm sitting around waiting to go wrestle. You know? and that's such a good skill to have as well. It means you can talk to so many more people and help people right. and, and travel them. It's amazing. Yeah, and it, it's, it's, it's cool because uh, I remember a couple, for years now, uh, we'll go to like a big, a fan access or a signing or something and someone's writing down something to talk to them. I'm like, Oh no, I'm like, I can sign. I was a deaf student. I was yeah. like, I can, I can sign with you and I can do a couple different things. And it's, it, it, it's cool. So they don't, you know, you can communicate Kate and get whatever you, uh, you know, picture or autograph or whatever. You can actually understand what they're saying without them having to write down or have someone talk for them. It's like, it's a cool, it's a cool moment. Hello, I'm Josh Whittacom and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell show. I can name all the kind of neighbors cast from about 92 to 94. Mm -hmm. If you ask, like, if you gave me a character, yeah. you need to talk about setting yourself up for a fall. But like, there's a certain period where I watched neighbors so much that without trying, I by osmosis learned all the actors' names just because I saw the credits every day. Yeah. So now I know all of the actors. So that's kind of my party trick of those. I mean, you get to actually pull out a party. It'll have to be a bad party for me to pull that out. <laughs> I'll say I got into you know the the eighties TV show Prison of Cell Block H. There was yeah, yeah. A, a remake of it called Wentworth Prison, and it's really right. good. There's lots of drama. It's very tense. It's quite violent as well. But when that finished last August, I decided to go back and start rewatching the original series. Yeah. Now there's a lot of people in the original Prison of Cell Block H that then went on Harold Bishop even in oh, really Smith, I think, but went on to be in Neighbours. Yeah. I much say that there's a reunion episode quite recently of Neighbours that had loads of Prisoner Cell Block H members in. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think, I think Jackie Woodburn, who played Susan Kennedy, might have been yeah. in Prisoner Cell Block Yeah, she was in it, yeah. Yeah. I think it's like the same, I mean, I might be wrong on this, but I think it's like, is it Red, Reg Grundy or whatever that made, made Neighbours mm. made Prisoner Cell Block H? And not only that, I think where Ramsey Street is filmed or was filmed is also where Prince of Cell Block H was filmed. I saw a, a, a oh, tour really? thing and the old building is still there. Oh, uh, because obviously, you know, the kind of Ramsey Street was a, um, is a normal street, obviously, in Melbourne. And like when I was growing up, I knew that fact, but I didn't understand. So I, there are people who were like, yeah, it's a normal street where people actually live in it. But I didn't mm. understand that that meant I presume they were using the interiors of the houses. I presume people were living in the houses because I didn't know how TV worked. So for years I was thinking, I wouldn't want to live there because they'd be filming in your house and you'd have to like keep it how they wanted. But obviously the set is different to the street. I've since found out. Huh? Is it ready? <laughs> no. I thought it was no, a documentary. No. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And that's why Kylie's such a weird kind of anomaly because we all know she's really called Charlene. Well, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. No. <laughs> Here's a fun fact about my very first fun fact. This iconic question was first asked to comedian Alex Edelman back in 2018. I'm Alex Edelman. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Tell me something that nobody watching this will know about you. A fun fact. Something that no one else will know about me. In what arena of my life I'm trying to... 
could be um, a fun hobby that you have. It could be when I was a child, I used to write letters to not famous people, but people who had been bystanders to interesting historical events, like the dudes who dropped the atomic bomb on uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and people who had, who were involved in different important sports plays, like um, a specific pass in a football game or a specific tackle in a football game. Um, and I had a brief pen pal ship with Ray Bradbury, who wrote Fahrenheit 451. And this is all because my grandmother saw that I was struggling with writing, and she wanted to get me to write more. So this was her way of encouraging me to to do that. So I have all of these weird letters and mementos from like different World War II heroes and Medal of Honor winners, which is our biggest uh, award award for valor. And different sporting people that I admired a lot growing up, and many of whom have passed away, because it's been, you know, 15, 20 years since, you know, I underwent this, uh, not 20, but 15 years since I was doing this. So I think that's really interesting, actually. That's very interesting, and I've never talked about that, so I guess that's a little new fun fact for the viewers of the Sarah O'Connell Show. Sure is. I'm Ahmed Best, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Fun fact about me, um, I am a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. That's a fun fact. I think people knew that. Uh. Um, uh, I speak French. That's a fun fact. Um, I, am, I have an incredibly green thumb. I'm very, very good at gardening. And I'm, I'm an avid gardener. I love gardening. I love it quite a lot. Everybody wants to share their gardening or their plants or their pictures. Yeah. Please do. I'm, I'm super into it. You must subscribe to the Sarah O'Connell Show if you know what's good for you. I'm Jinx Monsoon, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. <laughs> I think it's become kind of common knowledge, but I'm a big video game nerd. What's your favorite? Um, I play a lot of, of Overwatch. Okay. I'll, I'll say Overwatch. My favorite video game series of all time is Zelda, um, The Legend of Zelda. But I play a lot of Overwatch, and if you don't know, it's, it's, um, there's like a huge array of heroes yeah. to choose from. And what I love about the game is that there's all different cultures represented in it, and pretty much all of the characters are voiced by someone of that background so you don't have white people voicing you know african characters <laughs> it's all people from the background of the character that they're voicing which i absolutely love and then um it's basically just a bunch of superheroes playing capture the hat uh, capture, <laughs> capture the hag um, <laughs> capture the flag um and you know it's a shoot 'em up game and i always say it's the most masculine thing that i do is play that video game it's fantastic yeah <laughs> i played played zelda when i was a kid on the original nintendo and at the time the only way you could save the game was by pressing the off button and the reset button at the same time i played it for an entire day did that slightly wrong lost everything oh my gosh that that was one of the f only things my my dad and i bonded over as a kid was video games and i remember sitting and watching and then it would be with the old school original nintendo if you got up and walked past it and bumped it at all yeah. and the game froze it was devastating. I'm so glad that we've taken leaps and bounds with technology just for that one reason. <laughs> yeah, you had to kind of perform CPR on the cartridge to make your way with the breathing into it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a different time that was. I've had the opportunity to interview some truly legendary singers, and some of them have even performed special versions of their songs with very subtle messages in them. Cause I'm just a teenage dirtbag, baby Yeah, I'm just a teenage dirtbag, baby Subscribe to the Sarah O'Connell Show, baby, with me Ooh. Oh yeah, dirtbag she doesn't know what she's missing. Oh, yeah, Sarah. I'm so glad that I found your show. 
Sarah O'Connell Show. Well, I would fly you to the moon and back if you'll subscribe to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Most degrading moment of my life, and I would only do it for Sarah O'Connell. If you subscribe to a YouTube channel, go ahead now. Make sure it's the one by Sarah O'Connell. Go ahead now. Hey, Hi, I'm Darren Hayes, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Oh, um, something about me that you may not know. I'm going to quote Madonna. I'm going to do a paraphrase of Madonna. There's a question that she was asked in Truth or Dare, and Sarah Bernhard, who is another one of my favorite comedians, said mm -hmm. to her, who do you want to meet, honey? Who do you want to meet who would really blow your mind? You could meet anyone in the world. Who do you want to meet? And Madonna went, I think I've met everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but your question to me is, I feel like I've told everything to everybody. I really do. Um, we, we, we touched on it a little bit, but I think people would be surprised by how much I love comedy and how much um, uh, funny banter and, and laughing is a part of my life because I know that my, my music is emotional and I know that I probably come off as really earnest or whatever. Um, but I'm really stupid as well. Like I'm really, uh, I have a very um, absurdist <laughs> sense of humor. So I will crack myself up with stupid things that no one even thinks is funny. And, um, and yeah, I think you might be surprised to, to know that about me. Yeah. I'm not surprised to know that about you. I think you've got a wonderful oh. sense of humor. I think you're really quick, you're inventive. And I've seen quite a lot of your stuff online and I really want to see more of it. And I hope you get to do an hour, especially at one point in time, I'll definitely be in the audience for that. Oh, I would love to. I'm sure that I will in some way. Like, I mean, I've done stand-up. No one would yeah, really yeah. know that. And uh, thankfully none of it's filmed because as you probably know, uh, you have to really flop a lot. Um, uh, to be good at anything you know mm. and, um, but it comes naturally to me it I don't, I'm not saying I'm good at it but I'm saying it that being on stage and being comfortable with an audience it, it definitely translates yeah. um, uh, across mediums and uh, uh, my vo my version of stand-up is always just confessional so I will just start telling the story and then the story just runs away and I end up just confessing things that I genuinely wish that I hadn't and the audience can see that and it's that's what where the comedy is it's it's sort of accidental yeah. with with me so maybe one day we'll see the show would change every night though that, that's the thing hi I'm Angelica Ross and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell show fun fact about me a fun fact about me is that I I don't know oh Okay, so a fun fact about me is that I love to roller skate. Like, I love to roller skate. And I was so excited when I got to roller skate in American Horror Story um, 1984. There was a scene between me and Emma Roberts where we uh, are running away from these serial killers. And we stop at this roller rink, of course, because why not stop at a roller rink on your way from running away from serial killers? Um, just to have a good time. And I got to, like all of a sudden it just came back to me. I was skating backwards. I was like crossing my legs. I was like bending down. I was like doing all this stuff. And it was just, I got to be a kid again. It was really fun. I love that. Hi, I'm Don Hahn and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell show. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see, you know, I was a drummer. I used to be a drum head tester. Um, at a, there's a manufacturing company called Remo that makes all the drum heads for, for everybody around the world. They make banjo heads and marching drum heads and everything else. And so I was, when I was in college, I um, was hired as a drum head tester. So I put on ear protection and went in every day and tested drum heads. That was that. Um, what else? You know, I paint. I don't know. Um, I have a schnauzer. Does that count? Uh, <laughs> yes. A, a lover of dogs. Um, I play bass. Uh, so I love jazz and listening to and playing, uh, playing bass. I'm a huge fan of bicycle racing. Um, so whenever I get a chance, I try to go to the Tour de France or to 
um, some of the big bicycle races because it's an insane sport uh, and, and, you know, the best sport on the planet. Um, so, yeah, those are the deep, dark secrets behind Dom. <laughs> Hi, I'm Susie Ruffle. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Okay, I can do the Diablo, but I don't have it with me, so I can't prove it. Um, I've recently started doing watercolors for my stress, and it's helping. It seems to be helping. Uh, just, I'm really shit at it, like really bad at it, but um, I really enjoy it. So. That's good. Uh, that's, yeah, that's good. Watercolors, you can just keep going on top of them forever, exactly. can't you? Yeah, yeah. So I can just eventually it'll be a, a beautiful smudge of something yeah, exactly. in the distance. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that. Uh, other than that, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I've got anything, any other party tricks. I mean, it's not really a party trick, is it? The Diablo is. I can tap dance as well, but that's that less, that's less of a party trick and more of my teenage years of me <laughs> going to class every week. Absolutely. It's good to have, though, in, you know, for who knows grand finale. Out. Exactly. When it's going to come out, who knows? Hi, I'm Peter Ramsey. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Ha! Oh, boy. That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> fun fact. Uh, I... Uh, er... Oh, I can play the guitar. How about that? Wow. Not all that great, but I can play some. I can. Some. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you read music or have you sort of learned? Because some people just learn how to play things. And I don't really understand how without learning sheet music. And... Uh, you know, I, I took lessons for a while when I was when I was a kid, when I was mm. like, I don't know, probably like age like 10 to 13 or something like that. Yeah. I took lessons and I got pretty good. And uh, but you know, I, I kind of, uh, you know, you get a little older and you start getting interested in girls and, you know, other, yeah. you know, <laughs> other things. So my repertoire of, of things I can actually play is pretty limited, but uh, I, I, I can bust it out every once in a while. And, <laughs> it's always and good. Play. This next segment is definitely not safe for work. It's going to get a bit spicy now, so maybe watch it with a glass of milk nearby. And by spicy, I mean sexy. And by milk, I mean, well... I'll let Stephen explain it to you. Hi, I'm Stephen Bailey, and welcome back to The Sarah O'Connell Show. Something you don't know. Oh, I don't like receiving blowjobs, just giving. Oh. Too much. I bought you a uh, pack of 10 vouchers for them for Christmas. Oh, I'll give them Rich. He likes them. Okay. I mean... Sorry, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna break up with me all the time. Every day I'm like, oh no, he's gonna break up with me. He's gonna break up with me. Hi, I'm Anthony Scaramucci and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Fun fact about me. Well, you know, I mean, my wife is gonna be really mad at me if I tell you this, but I will tell you this, okay. Um, I have more than one sex toy in the house. How's that? Okay. Is are they, are they duplicates? Are they in different colors? No, yeah, they're just different, diff, different uh, types of experimentation. Is okay, that fun so enough? Yeah, that, that works definitely. Okay, so you've got right, a really nice little swing in there. Yeah, I mean, there's no swing in the house, but we got a, our share of sex toys. That's fantastic. We're very pleased for you. I really hope you've enjoyed this first collection of fun facts. There's lots more on the way, and who knows, maybe I'll ask your favourite director, actor, singer, author or comedian for a fun fact in a future episode. Thank you to all of my amazing guests over the past seven years, my Patreon supporters and every single one of you watching at home. Be sure to share, subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up and leave lots of lovely comments. And I'll see you all again soon for another episode of The Sarah O'Connell Show. Bye! Fun fact! This episode has concluded. <laughs>